Kid, seriously. Well, it's early December, so it's always a sad time of year because it means the MLS season has come to an end, which is, you know, one of our favorite things to watch. And we say sad because it always ends with our teams not in the playoffs, let alone in the MLS Cup itself. But Mark, you got to be a little bit more connected to it as a a new Portland Timbers season ticket holder and new resident of the, the Rose City you were able to watch your kind of secondary adopted team march into MLS Cup and not have the greatest result. So first, first tell me what the buildup was like in Portland going into that game and then what the experience was like watching it in Portland and the aftermath as they fell two to nothing to Atlanta. Okay, well, so, I mean, the buildup was crazy. I mean, it's all over TV and the local news. Every newspaper has it on the front cover. Um, You know, it's amazing to be able to just go out to kind of the typical mass media and not have to struggle to find coverage about it. I mean, it's everywhere and everybody's talking about it. You're walking down the streets and people are randomly just wearing Timbers gear. Um, Every bar has signs saying the game will be shown here. Um, So it's incredible that how much this town is into it. And I thought it was really kind of interesting that it wound up being Portland versus Atlanta because it seems to me like these are the two markets uh, in the U.S. that are most into their teams. Um, I know Seattle, they, they've got a, a loud, loyal fan base, but Seattle also has the Mariners. It also has the Seahawks. It kind of has other distractions. Um, Portland, there really isn't much other than the Timbers. I mean, you do have uh, Oregon State, um, and, and there's a couple smaller schools, but this is this is the game for sports up here. Do the Blazers so, have much of a presence right now? I don't know if they're any good. Oh, yeah, I mean, the Trail Blazers, I mean, you, you have kind of a small following, and, you know, you'll see people walking around in hats and, you know, jerseys, but people don't talk about the Trail Blazers. It, it's not conversations you hear in passing or that you know if i just bring this up randomly to somebody on the street that they're going to have an opinion whereas everybody has an opinion on the timbers everybody's excited about it um it was incredible you know i said it before but just the number of timbers paraphernalia i see people wearing um around the town uh, I had co-workers who wanted to talk to me about the game and were wearing scarves to work. And it was just ridiculous. I, You know, I knew Portland was into it, but I've just never been in a place that was so into soccer and was just, it was so much on the forefront of their minds and is knowledgeable about it. Now, having said that, I don't think anybody here was going to say it out loud beforehand, but I don't think anybody really expected them to win this game. Uh, I, I think deep down, if people were being honest with themselves, we all expected they were going to lose because that game's in Atlanta, and Atlanta is just a viciously good team. The, the, you know, the game itself, you know, they have viewing parties, every bar's packed nobody's out on the streets and that's what everybody was doing. Um, we had friends who were having to debate going to their, you know, um, work holiday parties versus going to the game or versus watching the game and, you know, trying to juggle how they're going to make both happen. Um, so everybody's watching and everybody's into it, but I don't feel like everybody thought that they were going to win. So today people are disappointed, but it's not raw. It's not, you know, an angry sort of empty feeling like it is being in Minnesota whenever the Vikings almost do something. It was, it, that, that people have moved on. I think people are, were really ready to get over it quickly. And we're just happy about the fact that the team even made it. Cause I don't even know. I don't, I, you know, I came here right as the playoffs started. So I don't know how they were feeling about it during the season, but I get the impression that not a lot of people were thinking that they were going to go far in the playoffs, much less make it to the title. So I think overall people are pretty happy. 
Well, and they were a fifth seed and only six teams in the East make it. So you're the second to last playoff team. You marched, you know, into Kansas City and won who was the number one seed. You, You know, you had to go through an extra round because you were a fifth seed. So, yeah, it's it's quite the impressive run, and I think you could very easily make the arguments, and I yesterday when the game ended, I, I made this claim, and I'm not so sure today if I would, but this Atlanta team could be the best team that MLS has ever had. Uh, I, I really don't know if they're better than Toronto of, of last year, which is weird to think that in back-to-back years we could have had two different teams lay claim to the best team in MLS. And, and, that, and the Red Bulls even set the record this year for for title, you know, for points in a season and got pretty much destroyed by Atlanta in their yeah. two game series. What they've done is really, really impressive. But the good news for the Timbers and the rest of MLS is, is this is going to be an interesting off season for Atlanta. Their coach is leaving. Al Marone's probably leaving. Joseph is not going to spend his whole career in Atlanta. I think that's a guarantee. Now they're willing to spend obviously, but can they, they put it all together like they have so quickly will be something impressive to watch. But, um, you know, I think a lot of Gio Savarisi, I remember watching him as a Metro star scoring on the field. Um, I thought a lot of him as a Cosmos coach, as someone, you know, I'm a Fire fan, but I I have an affinity towards Minnesota United since we both grew up there, even though they're not my team and they didn't exist while I lived there. I really, they had a deal in place to make him their coach instead of Adrian Heath, but they wouldn't pay the Cosmos a million dollar transfer fee. And I think not spending that million dollars has set Minnesota United back five years at least. So I, I really think a lot of Savarisi and I think Portland's going to be in a good place. And I think they're only going to get better. I mean, I don't know. Chara is not the best player in MLS, but there is no one who does his job better than Chara does his job for them. And Diego Valeri is an MVP and, you know, you have a young guy like Abobasi who looks good. There is a lot to be excited about in Portland. This is a team that could yeah. could win the West outright in the regular season next year. Oh yeah, no, I that, that's that's the other reason too why I think it's not so bitter a pill to swallow for for Timbers fans is that there is a lot of optimism going forward that this is going to be a team that's going to be competing for a long, long time. Um, also, too, you can never downplay. Um, how much of a positive it is just for the fact that they eliminated the Sounders from the playoffs. That's got to be sweet. That's got to be sweet for those two markets. If you crash and burn afterwards, at the very least, you get to go around for the rest of the next three months saying, yeah, but we eliminated the Sounders. So that's that's the other thing I think too, that I, I understood at kind of an academic level, but I didn't really understand until I get here is, how much they hate Seattle and how important beating Seattle is to them. That, you know, in some ways the Derby is more important than other things. Um, The other titles, other accolades that it's, yeah, okay. And winning MLS cup is great, but we beat Seattle and that's what matters. Well, and you know, the, the sweetest part about their star is being able to say that we won MLS cup before Seattle one MLS cup um you know Seattle has more trophies in general because they they have some shields and they have some they have four open cups or whatever but to to be the Timbers and be like yeah we we got our star before you uh that that's got to be a a pretty pretty good feeling well and and not only that too but Atlanta just being the monster club that it is you know packing 70,000 plus into a stadium um that really stripped Seattle of sort of their biggest bragging right for MLS that, you know, before Atlanta MLS or Seattle could say, yeah, we're the top draw. We're the closest thing you have to a super club and to, you know, a, a, a world comp level comp, you know, competition as far as, you know, club support. And then Atlanta comes along and just, grinds them into the ground and so i mean they might as well be freaking philadelphia when you're comparing them to atlanta's numbers so whereas the timbers are still you know consistently exactly where they were uh, they only have a well, right now it's a seventeen thousand stadium they're going to be expanding it but they're at the exact same level they sell out every game they're you know they can't compete with atlanta because they don't have the facilities for it so there, there also is a, a lot of joy 
for them in the fact that Seattle has lost kind of that one big claim to fame that they had. Well, and I, Seattle spends, so we'll we'll see what they do. You know, they haven't been shy about bringing in people when they need people, but. Man, they have a lot of aging stars. We already saw Dempsey leave. Like, you can't get that much more out of Alonzo. You put a lot of money into a very fragile Jordan Morris just just in the last few weeks. I could see Seattle being a team on the way down. And as, for as much acclaim as Lagerway gets, and he won two MLS Cups, one with RSL as the GM and one with Seattle, they were kind of these weird, you know, weird run. I mean, they won MLS Cup without having a shot on goal, which is ridiculous. They were yeah. pounded in that game and they're a, you know, a, a stuff on fry miracle save on Joseph Elzador away from losing two cups in a row and not having a star. And the same with RSL, they kind of went on a miracle run and beat my fire in front of me in the <laughs> conference semifinals and then uh, beat David Beckham's galaxy to win that MLS cup. So it, it isn't like he has, dominated and built an Atlanta type team. So I think Seattle could be an interesting to one to watch for the opposite reasons of Portland is they could be on the, the way down and what's that going to do for that rivalry will be pretty, pretty fun to watch as two guys yeah. who tend to heavily lean Portland as opposed yeah. to Sounders. Yeah. I think it. I think Portland is going to have the Cascadia cup pretty much sewn up for quite a, a while going forward. They're, they're built more for the long term and, Seattle's Seattle's always been kind of a hey we'll we'll spend big and bring somebody in and you know short term gap as opposed to really developing a lot of great players so yeah so um, despite a loss things are are upbeat here in the Rose City they're they're looking for I mean the the support here is insane so uh, you know it, they're gonna fans are gonna be here next season regardless even if they've flamed out and won the wooden spoon. So it's, it's, you know, people are already looking forward to next season. So, Hey, and we're, uh, we're only three months out. So congratulations, Atlanta and, uh, yay. Re-entry waiver phase two re-entry super drafts and all the other MLS nonsense we have in the meantime. So Mark, before we head out of here, why don't you tell them where they can find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Wink Martindale five no underscore. And we also have a guy who is not here because he is busy in his Aquaman pajamas and Aquaman sheets awaiting the release of the new Aquaman movie. That is at Maya Madrid. I am at Luke underscore Neitzel. All three of us combined are at Kid Seriously. And we will see you next time. Bye. See ya. Thanks for listening to Kids Seriously. If you didn't completely hate us, feel free to hit like, subscribe, or tell a friend about the show. If you want to write to us and tell us how much we suck, or just ask a question, you can reach us at kidsseriouslyradio at gmail.com. Otherwise, hit us up on Twitter at Kids Seriously. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.